Abe Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Hi, Jim. Can you get into the, the importance of uh, getting pressure on the quarterback when you're just rushing four? I know you guys like to blitz as well, but just the importance of um, getting pressure when you're just rushing four, and how do you feel, feel like you guys are doing in that department? I think we've been doing quite well. I mean, last game wasn't a passing game, but season long, I feel like uh, the majority of our pressures have been uh, four man rush and you know we're we're doing a good job disguising coverages and that's to me that's what it's all about i mean that's when you're really playing well is when you can get the sacks and the pressures without bringing extra people fourth row left jacob bench the lantern yeah hey jim uh, we were talking with jim uh, ryan rather um a few minutes ago just about making improvements these next two games because of the big game here at the end of the month against michigan just playing indiana playing against maryland how important is it maybe tune up or apply the concepts you want um, you know, everything, and I, and I just keep reiterating it to the team or anyone who wants to listen, everything is about habits, you know, that become uh, a lifestyle. So we want to stop every team on every possession of every game. Um, I do not believe that you can you know, somehow call it out of existence if you haven't done it over and over again when the time comes. So we don't talk really about um, so much. I mean, we have to talk about who we're playing in terms of game plan, but the way we play has got to be an every day, every game thing um, where you expect to stop them, you compete to stop them on that series because when the time comes that you need it, um, that's all you'll know. Uh, third row left, Dan Holt, 11 Warriors. Jim, you gave, gave up nine third down conversions against Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Four of them were on quarterback runs. Just how do you evaluate the third down defense overall? And then, you know, with the quarterback run, was that maybe something that caught you guys off guard or is it something you guys need to execute better on? The, um, I think our third downs have been good, you know, throughout the year. Uh, not pleased last game. You know, um, the quarterback run is always a difficult um, component, you know, in that in that uh, short yardage life. And, you know, I thought we had been doing well with it, but I, I, we didn't have a good game with the quarterback run. And then we didn't we did not have a good game on third down with the transition um, into a down, you know, the downfield passing. Um, I've had some experience with this when I was at Duke with playing option teams. Ba let's face it, basically that's what last game turned into. It was like option football. Um, so when your DBs spend 80% of the game where you're telling them don't worry about covering the receiver, you know, get off and have your vision back to what's going inside because they're not throwing the ball. And then, and then all of a sudden, okay, now this is third and eight. They got to throw the ball, and you need to tighten up that transition. It's a difficult. It's a difficult transition, and one that I did not do a good enough job preparing them for. So I think that's um, the couple that they made on longer yardages. I attribute to that uh, that transition, and and uh, I got to do a better job of coaching that. Um, Best thing about it is we were four for four on fourth down, you know, which is like four turnovers. And in that kind of game, that's what wins you the game. But um, we certainly need to do a lot better on third down. Uh, for the second row left, uh, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Maybe kind of an extension of that, but because this game was <coughs> from a, from a uh, circumstances standpoint was so bizarre, how different was what you guys saw from Northwestern compared to what you were planning to see? And then, can, without giving up trade secrets, can you kind of explain like how then that adjustment gets communicated down through the line, and, and how you felt like that? Meant? Yeah, I thought the the adjustments uh, went well. It was very different. They had components of what they did, but uh, when it went to strictly um, that kind of game, like I said, it becomes like option football. And then you know there are all kinds of gaps created by different formations and and um you know you're really going into a new world that we hadn't been into yet in that kind of game so you know I thought we adjusted 
uh, well, you know, didn't – you can give up some big plays off of that stuff, you know, because you're like one guy out of place and you give up a big play. And, um, you know, so I thought we hung in there, communicated down, you know, from me to the field, the adjustments, got it done, seven points. You know, I didn't like the amount of rushing yards we gave up or the third downs that kind of extended some drives. But but what we did on fourth down and and and, uh, and seven points, pretty damn good. So I, you know, I mean, you give the guys credit for that. Sorry about that. That's all right. Pat uh, Murphy, twenty four seven Sports. Yeah, John, <coughs> we talked a lot early on about you know, three linebackers and adjusting to, to the Big Ten. How do you feel like this defense has adjusted under you to what you were doing in the last few years to Big Ten football? And I imagine you didn't see a lot of weather like that down south as you as you might hear how, how has that all been for you how have you evaluated the way you've changed good I think uh, we've adjusted the system um, to be able to handle some things that you get in the Big Ten um, never good enough I mean there's always room for growth we're working on it um, you know taking from every every opportunity we get to get better but uh, I think it's it's gone uh, smoothly so far. Right next door, Tony Gerben, Buckeye Huddle. Um, okay. Um, Jim. Hey, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, have you ever coached? How are you? I'm doing good. fantastic. Oh, Thank you. I hope you enjoy your coffee. <laughs> have you ever experienced anything like that weather? Yes. Yes. When I was at... Uh, Duke, we played Boston College. Somebody look it up in a hurricane, and we won nine to seven. Yeah. Mm. How many on you? I w Coach Day wasn't there, so it might have been like 16, 17. Ryan said you guys are, he, he at least went and watched a bunch of NFL games. Did you go back and watch that game to see how you, you handled it, or like, how do you prepare for that? No, I didn't go back and watch it. I mean, I, I know what to do. You can't really prepare for it. Um, you just got to hunker down and fight, you know. I mean, there's just – and uh, really, uh, you got to do what you need to do to win the game. I mean, that's the bottom line to me. Uh, Coach Day has done that well, obviously, before me and continues to do it. But – and and I think now we're working well together. We got to – that's the situation. You got to do what you got to do to win the game. Forget about everything else. You know, yeah, I don't like the rushing stats. I don't like the third downs. Um, but we gave up seven points and we won the game. So you know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta remember that myself. Twenty fifteen, by the way. Fifteen. <laughs> okay. All right. Fifteen. Sorry about that. Tony. There you go. Uh, back row, Jeremy Birmingham Rivals. Jim, I know personnel decisions as far as switching out guys or you know in different positions aren't necessarily what you're focused on, but. In a game like that that you knew was going to be sort of turning into an option football game, it seemed like you'd want to have the more physical corners out there. Jordan Hancock didn't play. Uh, Jair Brown got in a lot, a lot earlier than I think people expected. Is there Was Jordan just not ready to go, or was it a situation where you just felt like he wasn't going to Yeah, the him? elements, right? I mean, and by the way, Jair did a good job, right? He, he, he really sat on some routes when they did start throwing the ball at the end and, and did a really nice job. Knocked one away, I know. Yeah, Jordan, I mean, you got to be careful. I mean, you're the field's a mess. I mean, this this guy's fighting his way and competing his way um, off, of, off of a significant injury. So you don't want to uh, put him in, unless you have to, really put him in that situation where he might re-injure it. Uh, fourth row right, Cameron Teague Robinson, the athletic. Jim, kind of obvious, all stuff you said earlier about third downs. When a team like Northwestern, I mean, it's, they win, I think, maybe nearly a quarter and a half about going up pass. <clears throat> How do you prepare kids for that when they don't throw and then it's third and eight? Like, it's not something, I mean, you don't, you can't just flip a switch and be like, okay, that's a, like, what's the way How do you prepare them for that? Yeah, I, I really, you only prepare them through experience, you know, and, um, I mean, it's just a matter of like, I don't know, the, you know, the sheep recognizing the voice of the shepherd, right? It's like, okay, when I call this certain thing now, I'm asking you to change your mindset, you know, you know what I mean? The call, not calling the same call, I don't believe in that. 
oh, I call this call and I call it again, but it's third and eight here. This time it's first and ten and they're running the ball, but you're using the same call and you're expecting the, the young man to make the change in his mind. Oh, situation's different. I make different calls. So now I just, you know, it's just experience. Just getting to say, okay, I'm, I made this call because I really want you to focus on they're going to throw the ball, you know, and for them to be able to click over like that into that based on based on the call, you know, I, that's on me. I just got to do a better job of preparing them for that, but we get to learn through experience, which is good. Right next door, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman in a row. Jim, I think we talked to you at the end of the spring, and you said that you guys were ahead of schedule. And we talked to you again in, the, in training camp, ahead of schedule, September, ahead of schedule. How do you feel second week of November with the big challenge coming at the end of the year about where you guys are right now at the defense? Yeah. I mean, I'd still say we're ahead of schedule. I mean, we have not, you know, like I've told you before, we've practiced a lot of things that we haven't used. Um, but we're, uh, uh, it's so hard to say because at the Ohio State, the expectations are so high, right? So, I mean, what really is ahead of schedule? Um, I would say for anywhere else in a first year defense, you'd say you're way ahead of schedule. For Ohio State, you're just saying, you know, we're doing our job. You know, that's what I would say. Yeah, so we're probably we're on schedule because we're doing what we're supposed to do. You know, you can't um, – this is what we're supposed to do as a defense at Ohio State. You know, so we're on schedule. It seems like the step from being where you guys were in March to now to get to the number six defense in the country took a lot of work. How much more work does it take to go from number six to number one now that you went from number whatever you were last year to number six? Same work. Same work, you know, I like, you know, I think maybe that's maybe the average fan doesn't understand like, oh, okay. Did I joke before like, okay, let me call that defense that gets a turnover. Okay, what's what defense was that again that produces a turnover or or you know, it's it's really the same work, the same habits. It's kind of maybe it's kind of boring, but it's like the same habits, the same ideals, the same sayings back and forth between me and the players and you're just trying to get better every day you know and, and um, don't talk about how far you've come or how much farther we have to go none of that just let's just get better today second or right Bill Landis rivals Jim when you're playing a, an offense that will throw six seven offensive linemen a couple 300 pound tight ends and create all those different gaps how, how do you determine when you're going to stay in your base and try to defend that that way or, or bring on those bigger packages like we saw with the four linebackers? Yeah, most of the time it's – most of the time you'll go to the bigger uh, packages. Um, you try to mix in staying in the base people because you have more options out of the base, right? So you're trying to figure out, okay, are, are they really just going to keep doing – the same stuff, or they, you know, do they have something else out of it? You know, so you want to you mix in base every now and then to make them feel like they don't have you lined up. You know, that you might do something different. You know, that they just can't say, "Oh, okay, they're doing this, we're doing this, they're doing that." Um, so you mix it up. Uh, Nick, right next door, Doug Lane Reese, Cleveland.com. Jim, talking about the, the third downs and the fourth downs. I guess their first drive of the second half, they had a third and one. Tommy dives over the pile, stops it, has to come out because his helmet comes off. Fourth and one, you guys stop. It looked like Tehran was really strong at the mm -hmm. point of attack up the middle. Just mm -hmm. what did you think of the execution to get that stop at that point in the game? And just how are you up in the box emotionally reacting when your defense gets a stop like that? I was, I was pleased. I mean, you know, again, I, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. And one of our sayings is, I, I say, give us an inch. They say, we'll defend it. I mean, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. So there's zero emotional reaction to me up in the box, zero, you know, because it's just on to the next, next series. Okay, what did we just do there? And it worked. What might they do next time it comes up? If they know I'm doing this, what are they going to do to that? You know, so it's all the permutations in my head. So there's really no time for celebration. But I want our defense to expect to win those situations. And when you have that, that moment, I asked Tommy after the game, like he, 
just the rules he has to come out on that fourth down. And then he's a, such an important part of the defense. You guys get the stop without him on the field. Without yeah, you don't, ever, you, do you don't game. blink, yeah. You don't blink. You know, again, that's the uh, reaction of the leader has a, has a big effect on the team. So I don't blink. I just, okay, next guy in, make make the call, play. Expect expect success. Second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Following up on what Bill was asking a little bit, you were, I think, earlier this year, just talking about how you'd really rather never come out of that base. You just kind of explained a little bit why. But whether it was early in the season when you've had some three linebacker looks or you had a four linebacker look or Michigan may make you do some other things. Mm -hmm. You come into the week already planning on we might have to pull this out, or is it just something like in the moment because you've already no, yeah, you gotta, it. you gotta practice it. You gotta, you have to work on it, and um, yeah, you, you like to have some change ups off of it too, you know. So you're not just like I said doing the same thing when that personnel group is in there, but it's definitely something you gotta practice, and then it becomes how much do I need to use it based on what kind of success they're having against the base because, like, you'd rather stay in base because the base gives you more options. Deep left, Justin Holbrook, WCMH. <coughs> yeah, I had three quarterbacks last week. They're going back to Connor this week. How do you prepare for a team that is supposed to have one quarterback going in? He had an injury. He might throw something else at you. I mean, how do you prepare with what they do normally with the quarterback that they might give you? You know, they're pretty similar. And, um, one guy may run around a little bit more, but um, I think your preparation is the same. Unless unless there's really a drastic change in what they do um, from one quarterback to the next, you try to <coughs> keep it as similar as possible between the two different guys. Trevor Wright, Austin Ward, rivals 97.1. Jim, I know with the volume of snaps that your defense had to play on Saturday that some rotation up front is going to be required. Part of Larry's philosophy has always been to be fresh in the fourth quarter. And so if, if that's the case and JT plays 11 out of 23 snaps and Zach plays 12, is that – are you comfortable with that amount? And it seems like pretty clearly those are your two best linemen at this point. Yeah, I'm comfortable with whatever Coach Johnson does, right? I mean, he is – he's – fantastic coach so I think he manages his players accordingly but I know sometimes you get we get caught up in packaging right like I I call I mean I think they they had all in the 50s you know if I, you know eventually at the end but sometimes we get caught up in packaging and, and and different calls that I make that put certain people in the game um also it's like uh it's a four quarter thing yes but it's also a series to series thing. It's also in the middle of series thing, you know. So, um, it's 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 a it's a a way that uh, he keeps the guys fresh and moving and all involved. So, I, I don't you know it's been successful. So, um, definitely go with with how he calls it. Right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row, uh, Deron Vincent, his. In a nutshell, has he been a pleasant surprise? Has he been a major surprise? The way, especially the way he's played recently, et cetera. Where would you? Because obviously you had no preconceived notion right. of him when you showed up and stuff. Right. He was a five-star recruit or high four-star. Is he playing to that level now? I mean, what what are you seeing from him? He's playing to that level. If that, I didn't even know his level. I mean, that you know, yeah. like that four-star and five-star stuff, you know, coming in or or looking at it, but. He has been um, absolutely consistent since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we joke all the time, he and I, about the amount of double teams he has to take on. You know what I mean? It's just not – it's not very sexy, you know. Um, but he does that work. Um, and he's he's been incredibly consistent with it and uh, really a, a bonus, you know, for me to have inside because then he'll be you know he he can he can do that I don't care who you are nobody really likes that but he can do that but then when we move him he's athletic enough to make plays you know yeah. both yeah and one other thing I kind of asked you about this off and on through the year but does it do, does it do any good to complain about holding does it have you found that uh I mean there's a great video of sh photo of uh, JT Tuimolo out 
standing up a guy, a tackle, on Saturday, and he's reaching with his left arm. You remember the play. But clearly the, the right tackle's got his jersey and pulling down. I mean, uh, JT seems to have had to run a gauntlet. Maybe others don't this year just to make plays. Do, but have you found, does it do any good to complain uh, to higher-ups about that kind of situation? No. It does no good to complain. And I stopped uh, – complaining a long time ago probably in my early 30s you know really just you just um yeah you got to fight you got to fight through it you know and it's uh, JT I think gets him more because he's so athletic and you know uh, linemen get out of control you could probably call it on him every other play you know guys that are blocking him but unfortunately it's part of the game but you know it's an offensive world so you know defensive guys kind of Hobble along, fighting against the rules, and uphill the whole way, uphill both ways, like, yeah. like my dad said when he went to school. Yeah, in bad weather, uphill both ways, and they're holding you and double teaming you, high lowing you. But no, uh, don't complain. Don't use it as an excuse. Don't talk about it with the players. You know. Now when they get the, they get one, I celebrate it. You know, hey, you drew a holding call. You know, everybody, you know, clap, and that's good. But. Um, Otherwise, we don't talk about it. It becomes part of the game, and uh, you got to fight through it. Got time for two more questions. Uh, front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, to revisit the quarterback runs at, at Northwestern, um, defending those plays, is there any commonality to what you faced earlier in the year with, with Toledo and, and trying to, to defend a quarterback who can move and what's, what goes into maybe? Yeah, I think there's commonalities. Yeah, you know, there's. Anytime you face the quarterback run, there's definitely commonalities and things that you can learn from it. Um, and it's everywhere in football, and now even in the NFL, you know, uh, they see it. So, yeah, there are principles. There are things you can learn. There are things you can point out and the mistakes that you made and why you made them and, uh, and, and how we need to do it better. And other, you know, and then uh, there are certain plays where I can point out the player to the players and say, look, I – we have this call. I should have made that call. You know what I mean? When it, you know, this one is, you know, not great against quarterback run. This one is much better. I should have made the other call. You know, I, I, I can take responsibility for that too. How would you assess their their use your comfort level with the, defending a mobile quarterback at this stage of the season? Yeah, I mean, uh, good, good. You know, I mean, I think we have at least I should say we have all the right tools in place. Um, we just need better execution. But I think the guys understand it. Three final questions. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, obviously, you, <clears throat> because of the conditions, you went to four linebackers at times. But just generally speaking, how, how confident are you in not just Tommy and, and Steele but, and, and Cody, but guys like Taraji got a snap and, and EA and, and just the depth there? I think that depth has, has, has grown. You know, the more we've been able to get – Cody in in three linebacker situation. It's just more opportunities for me to see him in the game and then, you know, feel, okay, if he goes in in the two linebacker situation, he's going to be good. So it's good. It's a, you know, an NEA. I want to start to bring him along, you know, in a, in the two linebacker situation. So it's not just Tommy and Steele, but it could be Cody and EA. And I think the more opportunities they get to be in the game in other positions, it's still it's still the game. And, and you know, you're talking about our season on the line and a seven, you know what I mean? It's, these are like critical points. I don't care who you're playing. And to get those guys in there and see them perform is a good thing for me in terms of confidence down the road. Hold on, Cody Simon on the touchdown run. Mm. No comment. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much.